Good morning, my name is Blake, and welcome to day three of this 21-day devotional, Restart Your Heart with the Pentecostals of Murfreesboro. I'm glad you could join us as we go through this devotional uh, each day. Someone new is going to walk through a different day of the devotional, and I encourage you guys to catch up uh, if you haven't already. Um, today we're going to be talking about Love Matters. Um, so I really like this one. Uh, in the beginning, he kind of portrays a picture of an escalating fami family argument. Um, and I think a lot of us can certainly um, understand that situation. Uh, you know, for, for me, it kind of hits home uh, because that was a large part of me growing up was just, you know, family arguments and that kind of stuff. Um, and he gives kind of five lessons to remember uh, in our time of, of, you know, in our, in our season of conflict, as the, as the book says, the first one is God is attracted to weakness. Um, you know, the Bible says that God resists the proud. If he's resisting the proud, then he's got to be attracted to the weak. There's something about weakness that God can, can work with and mold and shape. Um, but if, you know, we're, if we're trying to do things through our own strength then God kind of doesn't want anything to do with that. So uh, even when, you know, you've got family stuff going on and everything in your life isn't really going the way you want it to go. Uh, just remember that God is there and he's attracted to your weakness and try not to, to do it through your own means and through your own strength. Just kind of be weak and let God be strong for you. Uh, the second point that he makes is that it's a season, not a sentence. You know, this isn't something that you're condemned to, uh, and nothing lasts forever, you know, no matter what, how big the storm is, uh, how long you think it's been going on, you know, it's just for a season. It's not something you're condemned to. It kind of reminds me of um, in Matthew 14 when uh, Jesus is walking on the water and uh, they think it's a spirit and Peter asks them to, you know, God, if it's you, then bid me to come out there with you, which I don't kind of understand because uh, Peter, I guess, is the guy who just knew that hey, you're the son of God. I, I, you know, I know this already, but for me, if it's a spirit, that spirit's just going to bid you to come out there and drown anyway, but I'll just chalk that up to Peter having more faith than me. Um, but he, he bids him to come out of the water and he does, and he's kind of walking on the, the, the water with Jesus. And, and kind of the thing that I, I notice on this is he begins to sink and uh, he kind of cries out. And the Bible says immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him and, um, so just remember, God is closer to you think in the storm. You know, he, he was right next to Peter the whole time. Uh, and when he cried out for help, then immediately God, you know, stretched out his hand and, and helped him. Uh, and the last part of that uh, verse of scripture is talking about when they were coming to ship, the wind ceased. Um, so the whole time that Peter was out on the water, the storm was still going on. Like he was standing right next to God, closer to God than any of us have ever been. And you know, the storm is still raging on it's just, just because we're, you know, as close to God as we can possibly be doesn't mean that the storm's not going to be there. So just remember that it's a season and it's a time. It's not going to last forever, uh, but but cling close to God. The third one is the pain you feel is the pain you can heal. Um, kind of like the book talks about if you're not aware that something is broken, you're never going to fix it. Um, it's just as simple as that. Like, how can you fix something that you don't know is broken? Um, so just, can, you know, kind of be receptive um, to God in these situations, you know, knowing and understanding that when you're feeling pain, it's, it's for a reason, you know, when with pain comes healing. So um, just kind of keep praying that God is going to heal the situation, no matter how much pain you might be in. Uh, and the fourth one is never underestimate the power of being in God's house. And this one is really good. Um, you know, for me, whenever I was going through my family troubles, um, every Sunday and Wednesday uh, was just my shelter. Like it was what kept me going through the week, uh, no matter what was happening at home, no matter what was happening with family, you know, God is still God. And being in the presence of God is the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. Um, and, I, you know, I, I don't take it for granted. And no matter what's happening to you, then, you know, you should never take the presence of God for granted because, you know, if you just keep being numb and 
dulled of the situation. You know, there might be a time when you don't feel the presence of God. And man, that's scary. Uh, at least to me, you know, I, I don't ever want to be in that situation where I've kind of just grown numb to the presence of God. It's easy to um, kind of take for granted. I get that in our generation in this time that of everything coming instant, but if you're going to do anything, uh, anything worthwhile, then, you know, just kind of have that relationship with God. And the fifth one is love matters. Um, at the end of the day, love uh, is what gets us through it all. You know, uh, these, the book kind of talks about um, no matter what, even at the end of the day, that they knew that it was family. And no matter what kind of arguments they were having, no matter what kind of uh, disagreements they had, they all knew that they loved each other at the end of the day. Um, so I think if, if you're going to be in that kind of season, just make it known that, you know, Hey, you know, I know we have our disagreements. I know we're not necessarily in the greatest place right now, but I want you to know that I, I love you and everything that I do is coming through a place of love. Um, it's easy to forget that because we kind of get wrapped up and, you know, if we're in an argument or something, we just want to be right. Or we want people to hear our side of the conversation, but, um, just do everything in love. Um, and that's really what this is all about. It's learning to love like you've never been hurt. Um, it's a hard thing to do, but it starts with God. Um, so let's pray. God, thank you. I pray that you show us to love like you love God. I know that's a tall order and a big task. God, for you love us so, so much. God, keep your hand upon us, Lord. Open up our heart. Renew us, God. Make us new and like you, God. Teach us how to love like you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you guys for joining me from day three of Love Matters. Take some time today to read the devotional for yourself if you haven't already, and join us live tomorrow at seven as we discuss day four, uh, Love Never Fails. Thanks.